All right. So in this video, we're going to look at invertebrates. And in the first animal overview video, obviously, we talked about the different phyla um, of animals, but we didn't go into any great detail. So let's jump in, go into a little bit more detail with the invertebrate phyla that fall into the animal kingdom. And again, an invertebrate is an animal that does not have a backbone. So we're basically going to take each phyla, we're going to look at the um, main characteristics of that phyla, and we're going to look at some examples, okay? So the first one is the sponge, right, periphera. Um, the, the term periphera comes from the fact that the body structure of a sponge has a lot of pores, okay? It doesn't have any true tissues, like, um, you know, human beings have tissues. They are sessile for the majority of their life, which means they're stuck in one spot, they're not moving, um, but they do move in the larva stage of their life cycle. Now, they are filter feeders, and I'll show you that in a picture here in just a second, um, but they pump water in through the pores at the bottom, and it goes out the top of the sponge, that hole at the top of the sponge. And then they, you know, as they pump the water through their cells, they filter out the food. Um, Sponges are pretty sensitive organisms, so if you see a bunch of sponges in an area, that's a good indication that the ecosystem is pretty healthy. Now, as far as their body type is concerned, they are asymmetrical. Um, they do not have a coelom, so they're acelomates as far as their body cavity is concerned. They have no nervous system. They have a nervous net, but no, no brain, no nervous system. Um, the digestion that they undergo is intracellular, so it's not in the, like, they don't have a digestive system. They just digest their food in their cells. Their circulatory system is based on water movement. They breathe by gas exchange, so as, you know, oxygen in the water just diffuses into their cells. They can reproduce sexually or asexually, and as far as their skeleton is concerned, it's a very simple skeleton, um, but there is no bone present. Now, here are your sponges. Um, they are sponges, right? I mean, they're not really anything crazy. Um, on the top right, you can see where uh, some divers have dropped some dye in the water. You can see it kind of down here. Oh, oh sorry. So they put some dye, this green dye down here at the base of the sponge. And you can see that the water is being pumped out of the sponge. So that's how it filters uh, the water. And you can also see that here with this uh, kind of sandy, dirty water. Uh, obviously, sponges come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, fish live in sponges sometimes. The things will lay eggs in sponges. It doesn't bother the sponge at all. So sponges are pretty unique, pretty cool organisms. All right, now let's look at nadaria. Um, nadaria are organisms that have stinging tentacles. And in the ends of these tentacles are cells called um, nemat or, yeah, nematocysts, excuse me. Um, and the nematocysts are, uh, they have like a little hair trigger. So if you touch that hair, it shoots out that little, um, little poison dart, so to speak. So it's like a hypodermic needle connected to a venom sac in the cell. Anyway, um, the nadaria have two parts on their life cycle. They have a polyp stage and they have a medusa stage. Um, if you see an anemone, uh, that's the polyp stage. It's sessile. It doesn't move. Um, but the medusa stage, which looks kind of like a jellyfish, uh, that's the mobile phase. Remember, animals have to move at some point. And there are four main classes of nadaria. There are the jellyfish, the anemone, the corals, the box jellyfish, and hydra. Okay, so those are our four. Now, the nadarians all have radial symmetry. Okay, so they have a, a set point in the middle and everything is, is radiated around that point. Uh, they are acelomates, so they don't have body cavities. They have simple decentralized nervous systems, so there's no big brain. Uh, they do have extracellular digestion and they have one opening, right? So think about a jellyfish, it's like the umbrella. It's closed on the top, it just has the one opening. Uh, their circulatory system is, again, based on water movement, just like the... Um, just like the sponges, they breathe by diffusion. They can undergo sexual or asexual reproduction. And their skeleton is hydrostatic, which is water under pressure in set areas. So here are some um, nadarians. On the left, we have an anemone. And on the right, we have the jellyfish. Uh, things like the man of war or a hydra, uh, they all fall under the nadaria 
uh, category. All right, moving on to our flatworms. And you'll notice there's a lot of different kind of worms that we classify in the animal kingdom. Um, the first one is platyhelminthes. These are flat, soft-bodied worms, okay? Many of them are parasites. They typically live in aquatic environments. Uh, some of them use cilia to move, some of them use their muscles, sometimes it's a combination of the two. And there are three different classes of platyhelminthes. There are the planarians, the flukes, and the tapeworms. Now, flukes and tapeworms are both parasites. They have bilateral symmetry, so we expect to see cephalization in these organisms. They are acelomates, so they have no true body cavity. Um, they have simple nervous systems, but they do have brains. They're present. They have extracellular digestion, and the platyhelminthes, just like the, um, what's the word? Nadarians only have one opening all right, in their body cavity. They use diffusion for their circulatory system, same thing for their respiratory system. They can reproduce sexually or asexually, and they also have a hydrostatic skeletal system. Now, I'm going to warn you, some of these are gross as we get into these, these parasites. Um, on the left, we have a planarian. Um, on the top right, we have a tapeworm in the intestine. It's kind of doing its thing there. Uh, bottom left is a liver fluke, and bottom right is a blood fluke. Now, this is actually two flukes. Uh, this larger one that's kind of shaped like a hot dog bun is the male, and then this right here is the female, and she just kind of hangs out. He's like cupping um, the female. They just kind of hook up and live forever um, and produce thousands of little eggs, and they're not a pleasant parasite to have. So these are all of the... Um, these are some of the examples of the flatworms, all right? The next set of worms we're going to look at are roundworms. They fall under the phylum nematoda or nematodes. Um, they are round, really thin. They have soft bodies. They will molt as they grow, all right? Um, these are the simplest animals that have two openings in their digestive tract, so they have both an anus and a mouth. Uh, they are free living. There are a few that are parasites. Um, and a lot of them have hooks in their mouths. So um, not, you know, pleasant for us, but if you're a parasite, that can be a pretty useful thing. They have bilateral symmetry, so we expect cephalization. They are pseudocelomates, so this is slightly different, right? They have a pseudocelum, um, a, a false body cavity is what that means, but there is a cavity there. Um, they have ganglia, which is like a brain. It's a little smaller than a brain, but it is still a simple nervous system. They do have extracellular digestion, so there is a digestive tract in these organisms. Um, their circulatory system and respiration is handled by diffusion. They reproduce asexually and sexually, and they have that hydrostatic water under pressure-based skeleton. Here are some of our... Uh, nematodes. So on the left, we have top left, we have a hookworm. All right, that can get into your foot. Typically, they're very unpleasant. Um, you can look up some gross pictures if you really want to. On the right, there are pinworms. The top right, those little white things in the um, lower intestinal wall there. And then at the bottom right, we have trichinella. And if you ever heard of trichinosis, which is what you get from eating like undercooked pork, uh, that is the organism that is responsible for trichinosis. All right, moving on. Next worm. The segmented worms, all right? These are annelida or annelids, um, or excuse me, annelida. Wow, not annelida, annelida. Um, the bodies are soft, all right? Just like the other worms, but they're much more complex. They have segments, all right? Each segment has a nerve ending and a blood vessel present. Um, they have really well-developed sense organs, okay, um, compared to the other organisms that we've looked at so far. A lot of them live uh, in the water, and these have true body cavity, uh, cavities. So these are coelomates, right? They do undergo cephalization. They have a head with most of their senses concentrated in that area. They have a brain with a moderately developed nervous system, okay? They have the two-opening digestive tract. Uh, their circulatory system actually has a heart-like structure. It's a closed system, so it's got, you know, blood vessels is what that means. They still breathe by gas diffusion. Um, reproduction can be sexual or asexual. These organisms typically have both male and female reproductive parts, um, and their skeleton is still hydrostatic. Here are some examples, right? Earthworms. We've seen those before. Leeches. Look at the leech on the bottom right. You can clearly see the segments 
each of those little ripples is a segment. And then the Pompeii worm here on the left, and you can also see all of those little segments. All right, keep on going right around that wheel, right? So the next phylum is the arthropoda or arthropods. Uh, this means jointed foot or jointed appendage. Um, these guys are going to be really obvious to you. They'll stick out. They have jointed legs. Many of them or all of them have chitin exoskeletons. They have segmented bodies. They molt as they grow. There are four classes that we see in the wild today. Um, spiders, horseshoe crabs, they have eight legs with two segments each. There are the miropoda, which are mini segments, right? They have one leg pair like centipedes or two legs per segment like the millipedes. There are the hexapods, right, which are six-legged, six three-segmented insects, so like your wasps, things like that. And then there are the crustaceans, all right? Um, they're going to have a hard exoskeleton and two pairs of antenna. They have bilateral symmetry, so we expect cephalization. They are coelomates, so they do have a body cavity. They have developed brains and nervous systems. They have the two opening digestive tract, all right? They have true hearts. And these are the first ones that are not going to breathe uh, by diffusion. So they have simple lungs or air tubes, and that's how they get their oxygen through their body. Um, very little asexual reproduction is found in this kingdom. And um, so, so primarily they reproduce by sexual reproduction. The skeleton is made of chitin, right? And it's going to be an exoskeleton. And remember, they have to molt that as they grow. So some great examples of um, our arthropods. Obviously, the first one, the easiest one to think about is the lobster. Um, but also there on the right, we have a uh, millipede. You can see that there are two legs on this segment, two legs on that segment, two legs on that segment. That's the difference in a millipede and a centipede. A centipede only has one pair of legs per segment. And then down here in the bottom left, we have an ant. All right, ants have three body parts. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it's like the head, the abdomen, and the thorax, something like that. And then you can see they have three pairs of legs. All right, our mollusks, or mollusks, mollusca is the Latin word. Um, these are soft-bodied aquatic animals. Many of them use a shell. They have a four-part body plan. They have a foot, a mantle, a shell, and then what we call the visceral mass. Viscera is like your guts, so the visceral mass is all the internal organs. They also use a radula as their feeding structure. It's like a tongue that has teeth on it, okay? Um, there's three different classes of those. Uh, the gastropod and the bivalve, bivalve are pretty important. It talks about how many shells they have. Now, they are coelomates. They have bilateral symmetry, so we will look for a head. They have a developed nervous system with a brain, two opening digestive tract. All right, and hopefully you're seeing, like, as we've moved on, there are some things in common here. That as we get more complicated organisms, you start to see, like, the more complicated the organism gets, the more likely it is to have a brain, to be bilaterally symmetrical, um, you know, so on and so forth. Anyway, their circulatory system is closed. It has a true heart. Um, the respiratory system is either gills or gill-like structures, mainly sexual reproduction, and they will have both an exoskeleton and hydrostatic skeletons in the mollusk family, phylum. All right, some examples. Here's a snail on the top left with a snail on his back, which is super fun. Um, we have an oyster, or an oyster, wow, an octopus on the right side, and we have a scallop on the bottom left. So scallops are pretty interesting looking things uh, before we cook them and eat them. All right, the next one, uh, the echinoderms, which means spiny skins. These are pretty advanced as far as their embryo development is concerned. They're very similar to vertebrates. They have five or more arms. We find them in marine biomes. So these are saltwater living, ocean dwelling organisms. Uh, they eat by pushing their stomach out of their mouth and digesting things that way. And there's five classes of this. You have the starfish, the brittle stars, sea urchins and sand dollars, the sea cucumbers, and then the sea lilies or feather stars. They have really cool powers of regeneration. So like uh, if you ever keep, if you ever keep a saltwater tank, you will invariably get brittle starfish in them. They will get sucked into your pump and get absolutely shredded 
and then they will just regrow and you'll get like 15 brittle starfish and then they'll get sucked in the pump and shredded and you'll have a hundred starfish. It's just constant. The brittle stars um, are really kind of annoying if you're doing a saltwater tank. Now, as far as their body type, echinoderms uh, have radial symmetry. They are coelomates. Um, their nervous system is pretty simple, though. There is no brain. Uh, starfish do have a neural ring, which goes around the middle of the um, starfish, and then there's a branch that goes into each arm. But um, as far as a really complicated brain, not really there. They do have two opening digestive tracts. Uh, their circulatory system is pretty unique. It is based on a water vascular system, so water in tubes. They use gills or gill-like structures to breathe. Um, they undergo sexual reproduction normally, but asexual reproduction if they are regenerating, and they all have endoskeletons. And here you can see a bunch of echinoderms. So we have top left is a, I believe, a crown of thorns starfish. Uh, on the right there, this is the brittle starfish. Um, and at the bottom left, we have a sea urchin. There we go. All right. So those are all the invertebrate phylums. Much closer look than we did in the animal overview. In the next video, we'll look at the vertebrates, all right? But if you have any questions on these guys, uh, please reach out. Let me know.